Hi. As you know, large language models and foundation models have received a lot of attention in the past few months. Since the introduction of ChatGPT and how useful it proved to, prove to be to a lot of people for a variety of applications, there have been more focus on research works and uh, tools and applications that, com that can be augmented with large language models in order to provide better results. Um, you have probably heard of Langchain, which is uh, an open source project, which in my opinion, perhaps the most important, uh, let's say, repository on GitHub related to large language models that enables you to work with different APIs, from open API APIs to uh, a lot of different types of models and provides many useful wrappers for a variety of applications. Um, Paper QA is a package that utilizes Langchain, uh, OpenAI API, and a few other things in order to provide you with a smooth question answering uh, functionality. In this video, we want to go over the Paper QA package, which is a very smartly written and a very brief package available on GitHub under the MIT license. And we're just going to go over the different functionalities and see what exactly it does, uh, the ideas, and uh, the toolkits that are provided in it. The main components of the Paper QA package are first the OpenAI embeddings, namely the default GPT 3.5 Turbo, um, to basically the to, to, to embed your text, which are which you are going to use as references, and embed your query, which is basically the question that you're trying to find the answer to. The other component is a vector database called Face, which is uh, one of the packages available by Facebook Research. The idea is that once you have a large number of passages that you want to kind of peruse and go over, you will have a large number of embeddings. Now, the OpenAI embeddings are 2048 dimensional, and you're going to have a lot of them. So you need a package that allows you to do efficient, uh, approximate nearest neighbor algorithms if needed. And FACE is going to provide you with that functionality. Um, and it basically serves as the backend for the similarity search and semantic search. Um, also, Langchain is the large language model wrapper that is uh, used in this project in order to generate the prompts, sorry, in order to build the prompts, in order to build the large language model and the LLM chain that connects that prompt to a language model and allows you to interact with it. In short, the operation of Paper QA can be summarized as this. You have a document, basically you have a series of documents, but for now let's focus on one. And this document will be broken into splits uh, and these splits will be, uh, let's say, so you could consider, for example, a window characterized by a length of number of characters that it contains and a certain overlap by which you, uh, it determines a, a stride by which you move that window forward. So you take each window and you use the large language model to embed them and then you will have these embeddings of these passages. And then you also embed your query. Your query then will be mapped, uh, will, will be compared and weighed against these uh, embeddings, and the top k passages from each document would be retained. You have a query reverse summarization, which is you're going to do the summarization, trying to provide direct quotes and stuff from the passage in order to provide context for the query. The summarization engine is going to provide the ultimate context that is going to be given to the question answering large language model. We'll go over these um, shortly. Here's an example question, such as how can uh, carbon uh, nanotubes be manufactured at a large scale? And you have uh, basically this kind of answer with the references. One thing to note uh, that I think I forgot to mention, so the way paper QA works, if you're not familiar with it, is that you provide a certain set of documents as your references. It could be, for example, certain articles about a certain subject. And then you provide a question, and you hope, like the, the answer that you expect is, uh, an answer to your question, leveraging those references and those references only by providing also citations and context as to how it reached that answer. So here's a question um, that's an example question like this, and you can see the answer and the references that it provides. Its installation is pretty straightforward, so it's a PyPy, and you can use PIP uh, install paper QA. And this is the overview of the users. One thing to note is that GPT-3 pricing is not free. So it's like, um, yeah, so, so here it says it's $0.02 per answer. It's assuming that the answer is like 1,000 uh, tokens. So the thing to note is that the OpenAI uh, API for the GPT-3 is $0.002 per 1,000 tokens. 
So this sort of assumes that you have 10,000 tokens being used for each answer approximately. Therefore, given that 1,000 words, uh, 1,000 tokens, uh, as OpenAI mentions, is roughly equivalent of 750 words, you have a 7,500 words being considered for an answer, so which is a, a reasonable, a reasonable average case. Um, so you just have to be mindful of that. Next, we want to talk about the prompts. In a nutshell, prompts is you instructing the large language model, which has been trained on a huge corpus of data, to do something as kind of similar to as you uh, instruct a human being to do that. Now, the point here is, when you have a large language model, a model with, let's say, 170 billion parameters of GPT-3 or like 1 trillion parameters of GPT-4, um, what's going on is that there is going to be emergent knowledge that is easily transferable, let's say, across different tasks, and therefore it makes the, or enables the large language model agent to be able to efficiently do few-shot and zero-shot learning tasks. So this prompting is essentially you you instructing it, and you expect the large language model to be able to um, take care of this task uh, efficiently. So. In this repository, the QA prompts.py is the main prompts that have been designed for the paper QA package that are going to be utilized in order to orient the large language model uh, in a way that you want it in order to respond to your questions. So technically, it has the summarization prompts, it has the citation prompts, it has the question prompts, and we will go over them uh, shortly. First, in terms of the packages, um, so PaperQA, as mentioned before, is using the Langchain wrapper. So Langchain does come with the prompt wrappers. So and it also has like a language or or LLM chain or the chain wrapper. So the first thing that they import is Langchain prompts. Um, the other thing is Langchain chain. So the prompt is going to provide you with a template like those that you see here, for example, on line nine, and uh, we'll talk about them shortly. And the chain is essentially chaining a large language model with a prompt template so that you can now interact with a large language model given that prompt. And we will see how that works. Then you have the chat model called chat open AI. Then you have the schemas, uh, human message and system message, system message. And you have uh, the prompt templates that are designed for the chat prompt and the human message prompt. A prompt in Langchain is going to look like this. So you initiate like a prompt template. The first thing you need to define is the input variable. So for example, you have the summarization prompt. Let's read it and it actually is essentially the instruction that you would kind of give to another human being. So it's kind of like that. So the template reads, summarize and provide direct quotes from the text below to help answer a question. Do not directly answer the question, instead summarize and quote to give evidence to help answer the question. Do not use outside sources. Reply with not applicable if the text is unrelated to the question. Use 75 or less words and uh, two new lines. And then they provide a the context SDR. So the context SDR provided uh, between the brackets is going to be one of the input variables that you have to provide it once you tie this prompt with a la large language model in a chain as we will see then you see that like let's say the prompt template it also has extracted from these citations so again if you provide the citation it provides that and uh, it, it, it assumes that the citation has to be provided um, then there's the question which you have to fill so you provide it with the context you provide it with the question and then the final part of it is relevant information summary uh, uh, column. Now, the large language model is supposed to go through this and fill the rest of it. Therefore, this prompt is going to instruct it as to what to do that. Now, if you, for example, work with 20 billion language models like the GPT Neox from Luther AI or other types of models, generally what happens is that they are not as efficient as, let's say, following instructions such as this, in my experience at least. Uh, so, so what happens is that uh, for example, in one of the papers we have covered, uh, they're called prefix tuning. You also see that these types of in-context learning are essentially a lot easier to do with the larger models that have been trained on more data. So, uh, yeah, that is why essentially why the Pepe QA is mainly focused on GPT-3, uh, essentially the GPT-3.5 Turbo, which is the default model of the OpenAI embeddings. But anyways, let's move on. The next prompt is the QA prompt. In the QA prompt, you have a question, you have a concept, context SDR, and you have length. So write an answer, you provide the length as well, for the question below solely based on the provided context. If the context provides insufficient information, reply I cannot answer. For each sentence in your answer, indicate which sources most support it via valid citation markers at the end of sentences, like an example. 
Answer in an unbiased and scholarly tone. And make clear what is your opinion. Use markdown for formatting. So all of these are instructions that, for example, if you interact with ChatGPT, you can see that it can easily and clearly support um, and follow. So then you provided the context as the object is the string describing whatever it is and then you have a question provided to it as well and then it's supposed to fill the answer everything is kind of the same as the summary then you have the search prompt you provided a question and the template reads we want to answer the following question you provided a question provide three keyword searches one search per line that will find papers to help answer the question do not use boolean operators recent years are 2021 two and three and then it, you know, it gives us like one point. So you want to kind of enumerate the keywords. Then there's a gate, uh, sorry, the get date time function. Now you have the citation prompt. In the citation prompt, you provide it with text and the, the request from the language model is provide a possible citation for the following text in the MLA format. And today's date is the date that you provide for and then you give it the text and it provides you with a citation tool for example if you give it like a pdf that includes a lot of weird text um let's say, oh, sorry if you give it a pdf that includes some text and it has like a weird file name it is still is going to read through it let's say it finds out the author is someone and then it tries to generate like a citation in mla format which is going to look very nice in the in the outputs and finally you have the make chain function so if the type of the language model you have is a chat open ai um, which is kind of the only thing supported here. You provide it with this and uh, you have the system message prompt. So a system message prompt is going to give uh, this instruction as kind of like a pretext for it. So you have you are a scholarly researcher, the answer is that answer is in an unbiased scholarly tone. You sometimes refuse to answer if there is insufficient information. So you provide it uh, as like a system prompt here. Then you have the human message prompt, which you know is one of the prompts above. And then you combine the two and you uh, generate it in let's say a chat prompt template from these messages once you have the chat prompt template like this and your language large language model is the chat open ai you essentially generate this llm chain with that large language model which is optimized for it uh, for a chat and then you also have this, this prompt provided for it so Th this kind of a conversation is automatically going to turn your question and your set of references into a conversation and then it's going to uh, help generating the results for you. Docs.py is the script where most of the magic of paper QA happens in. First, let's take a look at the important imports in here. Paper QA focuses on Facebook's face package in order to create its vector DB. Given that you're trying to represent or embed the text and then consider the similarities between texts in order to find out, let's say, the most relevant ones to a query of yours in each document, you have to do comparison between possibly large number of vectors. Therefore, a vector database is needed to do, let's say, approximate nearest neighbor algorithms and things as such. If you go to Langchain's uh, repository and in the vector store sub package, you can see wrappers around different types of different uh, vector databases. Face is going to be one of them in that. So they imported from this. The difference between this wrapper is that it's a Langchain wrapper, so it has certain options that does not necessarily limit you to work with actually numerical data as the input, meaning that you could, for example, provide it with, let's say, OpenAI embedding and give it the list of texts and then have that run on those and then add the numerical text to it, to it. So it's essentially the same phase, it's just that it has some additional interfaces which makes it easier for you to, um, to interact with it. The OpenAI embedding package is imported, the chat OpenAI are imported. So the first one is an embedding, the other one is a chat model. Now the OpenAI embedding is going to provide you with the option to generate numerical representations for the text in a nicely structured semantic, uh, nicely structured and interpretable semantic space, allowing you to efficiently compare them against each other semantically. And this is going to be the thing that is going to be used in order to match your query against uh, the represented and embedded versions of uh, different segments of the of the documents that you're trying to use as your references. Then you have the chat model uh, of the OpenAI embedding, which is uh, optimized for responding to text requests as like a chat engine. And you have like the LLM, LLM chain wrappers from the Langchain database as well. You have the get OpenAI callback from Langchain. This is going to be helpful for you in order to count the tokens that you use and, and you know, correspondingly 
um, compute the, the, the total dollar cost of your requests, which to mention, given the, you know, the, the intricacies of any possible query that could be fed to a Pepe QA number of references, how long each of them are going to be, it could be the case that your query ends up being uh, too expensive as well. But then again, um, that's just here to allow you to uh, find that, find that out for yourself. Um, let's look at the answer class, which does have these uh, attributes, question, answer, context, a list of contexts, references, formatted answer, passages, and tokens. The postinit method for that goes and looks at the contexts. If it's not changed from none, it's going to be an empty list, a passage. If it is none, it's going to be an empty dict. And the, the a string version of this is going to print the formatted answer for you. So this object is going to, as you could expect from the from its uh, etymology, it's going to be the object that is going to store the contents of your answer in. Now that we are done with the answer class, let's move on. The docs class is going to be very important because this is going to be essentially a collection of documents that is going to be used for answering a question. So when you initialize it, you provide it with certain key elements. The first one is going to be the chunk size limit. The chunk size limit is going to be the maximum number of characters to use for a single chunk of text. So you take the text from the document and then you break it down with a windows of a certain number of characters. And there is going to be an overlap between those as well. Again, to Again, note that uh, the window length is in characters, not words. And you have a large language model. So the LLM variable here is associated with the large language model agent, which is responsible for the, um, the, the question answering component of this, which is going to be the OpenAI embeddings, which is by default is going to be the chat uh, GPT 3.5 Tova. Then there's the summary language model. So it's going to be another language model, which is uh, focused on summarization. There's going to be a name and there's going to be an index path. This part is important for kind of noting what exactly happens to the LLM. So the LLM was by default none. So if the LLM is going to be none, they're going to set it to GPT 2.5 Torba. Okay. So up until this point, LLM is going to be a uh, version. And then now at this point, if this LLM is going to be SDR, this is going to be fed to the chat OpenAI model. So this value is going to be fed to this chat open AI model and now at this point you're going to have a model. Now if LLM was not none, again paper QA assumes that it's going to be one of the models that is compatible with the chat open AI. Now for the summary summary LLM, if it is not provided, it's going to be another uh, chat open AI agent as well. Nonetheless, if it was none, then the summary LLM is going to be the same as the LLM as well. So you have those different prompts that we have discussed before, the summary, search, citation, and QA prompts. So with each one of them and the corresponding large language model, namely search is going to be used uh, using the summary, cite is going to use the summary because like their idea is to summarize, and then the QA chain is going to be the la large language model, which is for question answering. Again, the summary chain, as the name indicates, is going to rely on the summary LLM as well. Now, when you have a document, let's say a text file or HTML or something like that, you provide the path to the add function. So you have instantiated a instance of an object of the docs class, and then it has the add attribute, sorry, the add method. And then you could run this on the file path of yours in order to add it to the collection of the documents that uh, you want paper QA to consider as a list of references. Now, this is the add function. Now, let's see what exactly is going into the add function. So the arguments include the path. You could provide a citation or you could leave it blank and there's going to be key, uh, disable check, and chunk characters. So each reference is going to be considered maximum of once. Therefore, if the path is already in the docs, it's going to be, the document is going to be already in the collection. Now, one thing to note is that the path is the only thing that is supposed to check uh, whether or not a reference has been uh, imported uh, in, a, in a duplicative and repetitive fashion. So. Just one thing to note. Now, if citation is none, then you want to generate the citation yourself. So what happens? You read the document from this path with this chunk size that is given, which was 3,000, I believe. You get the texts. Uh, you run the OpenAI callback because you want to see the, how many tokens it's going to be uh, running in. Then you run the citation equals cite.chain.run, and you provide it, uh, the first portion of the text. 
and if the citation is less than three or unknown in the citation or insufficient in the citation. So these are necess necessary but not, but not sufficient conditions, sorry, sufficient but not necessary conditions for the output of the citation large language model to indicate to you that it, it failed in, in, in generating a suitable citation for it. So these this kind of ad hoc parameters will be checked against the output of the citation. If they are present or if the length is less than three, the citation is going to be read, read as uh, unknown. Now to the key. If key is none, then you do a regular expression search in the citation and you find the author. This is assuming that you have you have a citation over here. Um, except it's going to be an attribute error, could not parse any key from the citation, consider adding it explicitly or something like that. Note that the citation uh, is either given or is generated using the large language model associated with the citation, which happened in here. In addition to the author, the year is going to be also found by regular expression from the citation as well. And then the key is going to be the author year like this. Now this suffix here is going to be important. The suffix is going to be, so the key is going to indicate okay, the author year and then the suffix is going to be A, B, C, D, indicating like the different, different supporting elements. Now if suffix is going to be empty, it's going to be set to A, otherwise it's going to be moving one step forward. Um, for key, so, so you add the suffix to the key as well, and then you have the self keys in which you add the key as well. <coughs> now you read the document, which provides you with the text and the metadata for those texts. And the question would be, what exactly does this metadata and text include, and uh, what exactly does the read doc uh, function do? To answer this, we have to go to another script, which is the readers.py script in the paper QA package, and go to the read doc to see what exactly happens. Now you can see that the main formats that are supported are PDF, text, and HTML. For each one of them, the paper QA provides you with parse, a, a specific dedicated parser. So you have parse PDF, parse text, and parse text for HTML with the flag HTML equal true, which differentiates it between this and, and the normal parse text. And you also have a parse code text, which is for let's say code documents, which happens to be the case when everything else is uh, covered and was not compatible with the document. You can see the inputs are path, citation, key, chunk characters, overlap between these different windows and disable check. Let us first go to the parse code, dot parse code uh, txt file. So this is for line numbers, so it's going to be based on lines and it's specifically dedicated for codes. You have splits like this, metadata like this, and the last line variable like this. So you open up the, fa uh, the file and you read it line by line. For each line, you're going to add the line to the split. So again, you remember split is this empty string. You're adding it to the split the moment it reaches over the chunk character size, which is uh, 2000 here. The split is going to basic. So you're going to take that split, you're going to take this chunk character window from it and then you can append it to the set of splits that you have. Then for the metadata, you pass citation, the doc key, and the key, just like here. And as for the split, you're going to remove that, you know, considering the overlap, you're going to remove that and, you know, retain the overlap from that removed window and, you know, go forward. You also set the last line to I, noting that this variable is going to supposed to cover how many lines you have read. Therefore, now we have a better understanding, in a nutshell, what splits and metadata that we're reading uh, are doing. Now let's go over the parse text method. So again, you have the same inputs, uh, it's just another interface. Now, for this you use the text splitter, and you provide it with the chunk characters and the overlap, and it provides that uh, splits for you by running it over the document. Um, and therefore the splits is going to be you know, create it like texts, and then you create the same key by providing with the key and the doc key and the citation, and then you just multiply it by the you know number of splits that you have in the in, in the splits or texts variable over here. For the py parse PDF, you're going to use the py PDF package to read the PDF file, and then as for the splits, you're going to have to go over each page. You're going to do the extract text method in order to get the first split. And then you will go over, you know, breaking it down into different chunks 
and then one thing that is additional in here in the, is that to the page you add this string uh, the string the value of the pages as you're reading through the different chunks and therefore for the different splits you have indications that to what to which one of the pages uh, they would belong one thing to note is that in the metadata for the splits you now have this this page to this page um, information as well so you have the key pages pg here as well and pg could be things such as this Alright, now that we know what exactly these texts and metadata are, let's go back uh, to the output of this read doc in the docs.py script and see what is being done to them. Now, if you know you join these texts together and if the length of it is small, you indicate that this does not look like a text document. Note the role of disable check in this pipeline as well. Now you have the texts, you have the metadata, you have the key, you create this dictionary object and you add it to the documents of yours with this path to this dictionary, to this database in some sense. And you have some face index. So face index is going to index a set of vectors, it's going to provide you with uh, a vector database. Now what you have here is that if it is not none, you're going to use the add text function and you give it the texts and the metadata and it will go into the face uh, index if it is not none. Now let's go over the clear function. The clear function is doing some sort of resetting. So you set the document to the empty dictionary, keys to an empty set, the face index is going to be set to none. The pickle file for storing the index is going to be initialized to this. If it exists, it gets deleted. The fs uh, for the face file system is going to be here at the index.face. It again is going to be um, concatenated with the path that you've provided for the index and if it exists it will be deleted as well so it's kind of like a hard reset for the docs object an interesting method is a doc previews which is going to return a list of these tuples these tuples are going to be the length of number of splits in them the doc key and the citation for them the build face index is going to be an interesting function if face index is none what's going to happen is this you go over the docs in the documents and then you go over the texts for each document in the list of documents. Therefore you kind of flatten this out resulting in a list of splits in your documents. So basically you have like a pool of all of the splits in across all of your documents. And then the reduce is going to be doing that for you. So you have this list of lists and then you reduce it by just concatenating them all resulting in this. You do the same for metadata and as for building the face index you use that wrapper from Langchain vector store and then you use it on face that from text you give it the list of texts and metadata just for recording and you give it the open AI embedding as the embedding that is going to turn these text uh, data into numerical vectors. So this is going to build the uh, face index for you. Finally, you have the query function, which is going to take the query, the key, the, sorry, a K, which indicates uh, the top number of top splits from each document that you want to take, and the length prompt, which is going to prompt the chat OpenAI with the number of words uh, by which you want your answer, you know, the, basically indicating the length of the answer you're interested in, and then the marginal relevance, whether or not it's going to be true. Then you go over the self dot underline query, the private query method, and then you uh, generate the answer based on that. If you go to the underline query uh, method, you have the tokens initialized to zero. You create an empty answer with given the query. So this is going to be an answer object. You initiate the open AI callback in order to count the number of tokens. Then you run the get evidence method on the answer, the number of uh, splits per document, number of max number of sources, and whether or not you want to use the marginal relevance, and then you create the answers. And then for each one of these runs, you're gonna have the tokens. So, okay, you do this, you yield the answer, and you also add the number of tokens that are used. And then context and citation is going to be uh, the answer context uh, provided here. You have the bib, you have the passages. If the context STR is less than 10, you could say that it has insufficient information. If it is not the case, then you're going to run the QA chain on it. You give it the query, you give it the context, you give it the length prompt, and you get the answer, and also you count the number of tokens as well. 
If you are unsure as to what happens exactly here in terms of the LLMs, you could go back to the prompts and you could see that, for example, for the summary, you could prompt us that you want to summarize and provide direct quotes uh, from the document with response to, in response to a question in order to provide a context for answering that question using those documents. So those are basically the summarization, let's say query, query aware summarizations of the references. Um, so those informations are those information are provided in the context. You provide the context to the QA chain, you provide the query, and then you get the answer text. Let's see what Get Evidence does. First, you run the build face index in order to generate those uh, numerical vectors that you need. You set the proper values for k. You go for the marginal relevance. Uh, this part of this is going to bring back the documents that you would need. So max marginal relevance searches one of the face index methods, the other one is a similarity search. Based on these two, based on one of these two, you're going to get the documents. So you have a question, you have the number of documents you have to fetch, and then you take a look at Next, you're going to go over the documents in the, in the return docs. And you have everything here, the doc, uh, metadata key citation, key, uh, you run the summary chain, uh, considering the question, the context, uh, given the page content and the metadata of the citation and the page content, and you get the C over here. If not applicable is not in C2, you yield the answer. And you break it when the max number of sources is reached. For all of the contexts that does not have a not applicable in them, you sort of concatenate and bring them all together. Add the context to the answer and return. Let's go back here to the get evidence being called in the underlying query method. You take the contexts and you run this to get the answer text. Here is an interesting if with this funny comment over here. You provide the passages with the reference of them and you create this formatted answer in which you have the question and you have the answer for it, which is in a formatted format, and you're supposed to add it to the answer here. And then you basically have everything. You have the references, you have the passages, you have the tokens, you have the formatted answer, and you have the answer of the text, which concludes the docs document. Finally, you have some additional functions in the utils.py, uh, which help the paper QA package. All right, that's it for now, and this concludes our discussion of the paper QA package. Thank you so much for watching this video.